<laughs> okay, good morning again. Um, as I said before, you pretty well all know who I am, um, because we've all been doing this for quite a long time, which kind of relates to my point, because um, I don't know about you, my eyes aren't getting any younger these days. Uh, I've had to wear progressive uh, lenses for several years, and uh, I don't particularly enjoy squinting at tiny little text. So, uh, unfortunately, with a lot of modern computer screens, including this guy here, uh, that's what we find ourselves doing. I mean, we've got 4K screens, we've got Apple's Retina displays, um, even some laptops are getting in on the game with high resolutions, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, you're seeing, um, I'm not sure what you call it, UQHD or something, whatever this is, or 2.5K, uh, even 4K resolutions on laptops. Um, so, I don't know if you've ever seen them being used without scaling. Too, but the things just get a little smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So I was personally motivated, uh, especially once I bought this, uh, to look into ways of improving the situation, uh, especially for OS2 users. So um, some terminology, by the way, high resolution. Uh, in this context, I generally don't mean screen size in pixels so much as I mean pixel density. So some context for you. There we go. When OS2 Presentation Manager was first designed, uh, it was designed assuming that the screen resolution, pixel density, was going to be 96 or 100 dpi or ppi, pixels per inch, uh, which was true, broadly speaking, um, for, for most of the last, well, most of the first, I guess, 20 or so years of uh, OS2's existence. However, uh, as I just said, modern computer screens increasingly, um, they may get pixel density as high as 200 pixels per inch, or even more. This laptop, which I bought last year, is a 16-inch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. That's sometimes called 2.5K. Uh, and that has a pixel density, it works out to, I think, around 190 pixels per inch. Uh, it's plenty small. Uh, if you use Apple computers, their retina displays, I think, are well over 200 pixels per inch. So, what does this mean for us? Well, on the higher pixel densities, icons are drawn in fixed pixel sizes, at least on OS 2, 40 by 40 pixels, or 20 by 20 pixels, or 32 by 32 pixels. Uh, text is usually in fixed sizes. Uh, UI elements usually have not completely fixed, but they're sort of relatively constant in, in a small range. So they get the, the, the higher the pixel density on your screen, the smaller and smaller all of these on-screen elements become. Now most operating systems have scaling options uh, that lets, lets you compensate. And I, I won't show you now, but if you've ever used Windows 10, or I think even Windows 7, uh, under the display settings, there's an option called uh, change the size of text, apps, and other items. And you can set it to like 100%, 150%, 175%, whatever. Uh, most Linux desktops, I believe, have a similar setting. Uh, and I assume Mac OS does as well, although I haven't checked. Presentation Manager does not have an option like this. We're basically stuck with the scaling of one to one. So, if we have this huge screen and this tiny or relatively fixed size OS2 user interface, what can we do about it? Well, the, obvi the simple obvious workaround is just set your desktop to a lower resolution. Uh, now, if you do this, uh, you may also have to set your screen to, to scale the contents to full screen. Because on some screens, especially on laptops, uh, if you set some, the, the resolution to lower than the screen's native resolution, it'll just draw it smaller, uh, use up less of <laughs> the screen. So most laptops that do this, they do usually have an option to scale the image to fit the screen. Uh, if you're using a virtual <coughs> machine, uh, you can actually, in VirtualBox at least, uh, you can turn on display scaling as well, uh, which I've actually done on the VM that I'm gonna be showing you here, but if you're not working in a VM, that doesn't really help you. Now, if this solution works for you and you're happy with it, good. 
great, use it. It's probably the, the simplest and easiest way to deal with this problem. The problem is, well, first of all, you're basically wasting the potential of the screen. If I've got a 2560 by 1600 screen and I'm running it at uh, 1600 by 1050, it's like I'm wasting the, all of the capabilities of this gorgeous screen that I paid money for as part of my laptop's price. Um, and the other problem, perhaps more practically, uh, generally speaking, flat panel screens have a native resolution, and if you run at anything other than that native resolution, it doesn't look as good. Usually it's going to look a bit fuzzier or possibly a bit jaggy, depending on the technology used. Now, modern screens are getting better at this, but it's still not necessarily ideal. You will always have the best picture quality if you're running at the screen's native resolution. So, as I say, if this solution, setting the desktop to a lower resolution, works for you and you're happy with it, by all means, do that. Because as I say, it's, it, it's the simplest way to, to solve this problem. But, what about those of us you know, for, for whom it's not an ideal solution? So, is there a better option? So, this is what we really need to, to consider. The fundamental question is, how can we increase the size of the various on-screen elements without changing or downscaling the resolution of the screen itself? So there's four main categories of on-screen elements, which I've listed here. Icons, graphical text, dialogs and controls, and windowed command prompts. Now, you'll notice that I haven't listed full screen text on this, and that's because it's not much of a problem for us. Uh, full screen mode generally does automatically use a lower resolution on BIOS, old-style old BIOS systems. Um, and on, you already have a way of scaling that up to the full screen. So full screen isn't really an issue, but... No, I'll leave that aside. So full screen isn't really an issue for the most part, but these other things, part of the graphical environment, how do we deal with that? Well, so the first element, uh, looking at the first one, we've got icons. Now, for desktop icons in general, we already have an easy solution. Just use a high-resolution icon enhancer. There's not a great deal we can do about the Warp Center. For the X Center, in theory, it's open source. It could probably be enhanced to, to have some um, support for things. There are ways to change it. But um, there's also application-specific dialogue text. That's when each individual program chooses its own font to use for the dialogues. And a lot of programs use the Warp Sans font for dialogues, which is nine point, and trust me, a nine point text gets very, very small when you have a screen this resolution. Um, and finally, there's application content text. So if you're using like a text editor or something, that would be the editor font. If you're using, uh, and, well, any other application that draws text on something that isn't uh, an icon, a dialogue resource, uh, that would be application content. And again, it's up to the application what you would use there. So, because we don't have a global scaling function like those other operating systems I mentioned, we have to find a way to set each of these different text types individually to a larger font. And they're usually set in different places from each other. They're actually kind of scattered all over the place. For application content text, most applications that are well designed actually let you choose the font. Like most text editors will let you choose the editor font. Um, other applications, similarly. For application specific dialogue text, they may or may not. That's a bit more hit and miss. But that there are ways of dealing with that, which I'll, I'll discuss in a bit. As for dialogue scaling, so you know, just changing the size of the font on a dialog doesn't always help if the dialog itself is the same size because you've got big text that's getting chopped off the ends. <coughs> and you, you sometimes see this occasionally if you go to high resolutions and the application developer hasn't really done their homework. Dialogs can actually be scaled to a point. There's a way to do it, it's a bit roundabout, and it has some limitations, but I'll explain what I mean by that a bit later. Okay, so these individual settings that I mentioned, 
Here's a quick rundown of what they are. So, uh, first thing you want to do if you have a really high resolution screen is make sure that your font DPI setting and the dialog size setting in the graphics driver are set to their maximum. And if you use um, Panorama, it's one of the screens on the screen object pages. Uh, There's usually a, like a page two, which gives you the option to set the font size, the font DPI and the dialog size. So you would want to set those to their largest. Generally speaking, if they're not explicitly set, OS2 will try to determine, presentation manager will try to figure out what the best size is according to your screen resolution. Um, <clears throat> There's like, it switches over from low DPI to sort of medium, high DPI at 1024 by 768 and higher resolutions normally. It does something else at around 1600 by 1200 and up. I've never quite figured out the, the exact logic behind it, but it, it, it does have some intelligence to it. But you can explicitly set it in the video driver and sometimes you may, you may find you need to. Uh, in Snap, I don't think there's a GUI for it, but there are some environment variables that you can set in config.sys, uh, SDD font size, SDD icon size, SDD font DPI, I think. But you can look them up, they're in the Snap documentation if, you, if you're using Snap. Um, so once you've done that, uh, you'll have to reboot. <clears throat> then, that's just the first step, that's kind of step one. So the next thing you want to do is apply a desktop scheme which uses large fonts. So we all know the scheme palette, right? I assume, in the workplace shell. That's where you can uh, set all kinds of text properties, choose the fonts as well as the font size. So these are all of the um, scheme elements that I could think of off the top of my head that involve the fonts that you can specify. So there's window text, desktop text, desktop icon text. Okay, desktop icon text is obvious. Folder icon text, also obvious. <coughs> Menu text, self-explanatory. Active title text, inactive title text, those with the title bar. Window text <coughs> is a little special. Uh, I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So you set all the fonts as you want in the scheme, then you drag the scheme, alt drag it to the desktop to, to make it default, and you should have larger fonts in many but not all places uh, in your system. So this does not change the default dialog font. As I mentioned before, you can't specify that through the scheme palette. There's two ways to change the, to affect the, the default dialog font. Now this is the font that's used on dialogs if there is no specific font set for it in the, in the individual software that created that dialog. And it is also the font that is used as the default uh, pres um, presentation space font if you're doing direct drawing in the graphics engine. So how do you change it? Well, for dialogues and dialogues only, uh, if you're running Styler, which is included with Arca OS and Ecom Station, uh, there is a di dialogue font option in the Styler uh, notebook and you can change the font there, but it's important to keep in mind that if you change the font in Styler, it just changes the font. It doesn't change the size of the dialogue. So you've got to make sure that you choose a font that's going to fit on the dialogues as they are. The other way to affect the dialogue font is to actually change the built-in default system font. And you can only do this normally by editing the OS2.ini file. <clears throat> it's under the application PM underscore system fonts and it's called default font and by default it is not defined. So if you go into a, a, an out of the box system, well a non-DBCS DBCS system and look for the setting in the init file you won't find it. But if you create it, it's a string setting, you can then define a point size and a font, reboot and all of your dialogues will now be using that font but it does something else too, which I will describe in about two slides from now. So what the settings do, I already kind of touched on this. For the scheme settings, icon text, menu text, exactly what it says on the tin. Window text fonts. Now window text font is used, I'm not entirely clear everywhere that this one's used. I think it may be used for folder 
like icons in certain folder views. However, a few years ago, I discovered something clever about this particular setting. You know, when you open a workplace shell properties dialog and you get that notebook with all of the pages with various properties for whatever it is, folder properties, desktop properties, the you know, screen settings, background, etc. Normally that th those all use 9.4 cents. However, if you set the Windows text font to anything larger than 10 point, and you have the extended version of Warp Sans, which includes 10, 11, and up point sizes, all of those original IBM Workplace Shell Settings pages will automatically use the larger version of Warp Sans that is closest to what your, sorry, this is having trouble aiming this, which is closest to what your window text font size is. I'm just describing it is a little confusing, but I'll be showing you what I mean later. Uh, another thing which you may not be aware of, uh, if you set the title bar text in a scheme, it's called active or inactive title text font, uh, if you set it to a large enough font, it will actually increase the size of your title bars and of your frame controls. Which can cause problems if you're using certain title bar enhancers which have a bitmap that you aren't scaling because you might find suddenly empty spaces on your title bars, but uh, I just released, or I, I'm testing an update to Styler which will, which will fix that for Styler in particular. Uh, I can't speak for candy bars or any of those others. Speaking of Styler, so Styler also has a way to set the title bar font. Um, if you set this and you set the title bar font in the scheme, the, what you will see is, is the one that you set in Styler. However, the scaling of the title bar will be based on what you set in the scheme. This is confusing, right? Don't worry, it gets simpler. Uh, as I mentioned, the dialog font replaces the default dialog font defined by the system, but it does not rescale the dialog controls, so again, you have to make sure you pick a font that's gonna fit on the dialogs. So you always wanna pick a font that's as big as or smaller than the system default dialog font. Okay, I promised I'd talk about dialog scaling. Just let me drink of water because this may take a bit of explaining. So as I mentioned, this setting, PM system fonts, a default font, changes the default dialog and presentation space font. Now, if this is not defined, there is obviously a built-in default, and that is system proportional. That's that big chunky font that uh, we all know and love to hate. Uh, the exact size of system proportional uh, depends on what your screen resolution is. Now if you're running, well, it also depends on your DPI setting on the video driver that I mentioned before, but assuming that that's at the default, if you use a screen resolution below 1024 by 768, the default font is the 96 DPI version of 10 point system proportional. If you use 1024 by 768 and up, the default is the 120 DPI version of system proportional, except once you get past around 1600 by 1200, it actually goes up to 12 point system proportional. Now, here's the, here's the tricky bit about the, uh, the default font setting. Unlike the styler setting, if you change the default font, it also changes the base unit by which dialogues are scaled throughout the system. The dialogue, it's called the dialog unit size, and it is based on the font that you select. So, this means that if you choose a default font that's bigger than the default, all of the dialogues throughout your system will grow bigger. They will have more space for more text. So you actually can set a very large font and any dialogue which doesn't override the font, like uh, many of them do, unfortunately, um, will not, will, they will use this new font, but also all dialogues will get bigger so that you can set a large font, theoretically as large as you like, as the dialogue font throughout your system, and the dialogues and text should all scale to fit it in an ideal. Now, as I mentioned, if you use the Styler dialog font setting, you have to make sure that it's 
the same size or smaller than the default font. So the default font should, should generally be larger than the stylog dialog font if you use it. So, <laughs> this was all a bit confusing, right? <laughs> Can't we make this easier? Wouldn't it be nice to have like a one click, oh, I just want a big font. Well, I've been working on that. And what I have so far is a proof of concept app uh, that I've been testing with some people. Um, it's not super sophisticated, but it works within certain limitations. What are these limitations? Okay, number one, if you have workplace shell properties notebook that were not originally included by IBM, so anything that was added by the video driver, anything that was added by X workplace, anything that was added by screensaver or dynamic icons or whatever, those unfortunately don't get affected by this font setting. They will stay stuck at their tiny fonts. The good news is most of these are open source programs. In theory, they could be updated to, to accommodate this. We just need to figure out how to do it and who's gonna do it. Um, notebook tab and status text. So <laughs> on the same, on the workplace shell properties notebooks, the actual page contents will use the bigger fonts but the notebook tabs themselves and the little status line, page one of two or whatever, that will continue to use the original font unless you drag a font from the, from the font palette onto the, onto the window containing the notebook, in which case they will scale up. What that tells me is that it's just a matter of setting the presentation parameters. So this could probably be, be fixed in Styler or something by adding an enhancement. I've looked at briefly at doing this. Um, like tweaking Styler to, to fix this problem. So far, all I've managed to do is render PM unbootable, but uh, <laughs> I am not Alessandro, so uh, there's a bit of a learning curve involved. Uh, You're not the only one that reports working on PM as tweaking reboots. <laughs> there are other people that have probably, if they got a, a dollar for every reboot that they give them under the development, they would be sitting here probably. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the, the width of scroll bars and combo box drop-down buttons, those unfortunately also tend to get stuck. I think those can also be changed by changing the, uh, the font size coded in that particular control. It's something that I still need to experiment with. Spin button width, this is actually a mistake. Uh, spin buttons do work with this. Uh, I verified that. So uh, scroll bars and combo boxes, those are an issue. Um, there's also third-party applications which use hard-coded fonts in their dialects. I mean, there's not a lot we can do about that except persuade the authors to update those programs or update them ourselves. Which is sometimes possible. Whether or not we have the source code, it depends. Uh, WinOS 2. I mean, WinOS, I have, I'm not even sure I've really tested this, any of this with WinOS 2 because, I mean, it's WinOS 2. <laughs> um, I'm not even I, certain if Windows 2 can, I'm not certain if the Windows 2 driver for full screen session can run at the same high resolutions as, uh, as the VM can. So mm -hmm. I think the graph, if you look in Reg Edit in the, uh, in the Reg Edit 2 in the OS2 INI file, you see a whole bunch of resolutions there for Windows 2 with different color depths. But, so I don't think you can even, <coughs> I would really be No, I'm typing on air. Sorry. <laughs> I'm typing on air here. No, no, no. <laughs> this is it. No, that's it. Actually, when, how did you get the humor on this thing, actually? It's booted into Windows. Ah, okay. Sorry. You, we, you tried, we did try with OS2, but the HDMI output wouldn't work. No, no that's expected. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't think you can so, save. I don't think you can save Windows. Yeah, I, well, I haven't really tried. I haven't been, re really been motivated to try, as you say. Um, unfortunately, so as, you, as I've written here, this technique has some limitations. And some of these, as I just noted, can probably be addressed with some work, and others, well, maybe not so much. We'll see. So the next objectives for this little proof of concept that I wrote um, 
what I want to do, it's, it's a standalone application right now, what I want to do is integrate it into Styler and then obviously figure out how to address those limitations that I just listed. Uh, All right. Um, the last thing that I mentioned was windowed command prompts. So many of you probably know this, some of you may not. Uh, there is a font size dialog in the OS2 window. Uh, if you go to the, the system menu control and choose font size, you get this dialog. And you can choose the font size here. And this font uh, selection box, get, move over there, arrow, come on, come on, there we go. Um, what this lists is actually all of the available sizes of the system BIO font, which are in the dspres.dll file. Unfortunately, they only go up to a certain size. Uh, the biggest one that is included by default is 30 by 12 pixels. Um, even on this laptop, that's pretty small. So um, what we did for Arc OS 5.1 is we actually created a few new sizes of system BIO and added them to dspres.dll. Um, hopefully those uh, help on high resolution screens. And I'll show you a couple of those once I switch over to my VM. Uh, in fact, I will do that now because uh, I'll, I'll use the, uh, I'll discuss the individual application bit. Uh, where's my VM? After I show you, okay, here we go. So this is an Arc OS 5.1 fresh install. I actually blew up the size a bit. This is um, running at 1.5 scaling. By the way, if you want to know what I was talking about there, uh, if you are using VirtualBox, there's this nice nifty little option, virtual screen, you can scale. So that's the, uh, what is it, 1600 by 1050 on my screen. It gives you an idea how big my screen is. back to 150 and uh, it scales very nicely. I actually uh, have an OS2 VM, an Arc OS VM uh, that I use for quite a lot of regular work on this system. When I'm not booted into OS2, I can boot into my VM and uh, I have it set to 1600 by 1050 and 1680 by 1050, sorry. Um, and I've turned the scaling up to 150 which almost works out it works out to very close to 2560 by 1600. There's just a, like a, I don't know, 10 or 15 pixels of black around the edge, which is barely noticeable. So I can pretend like I'm actually working on a, on a full screen OS2 system, even when I'm not booted into it. It's nice. Uh, so, uh, I'll show you the... I'm curious why you don't set this to like 1920 by 1080. You, you mentioned the lower one, right? Uh, yeah. Basically, are you limited to what you can do? The the um, I wasn't sure it would fit on the screen with the projector, and uh, this thing is not being very cooperative. What's going on here? Okay, there we go. I think it was just a, a drawing. Whoa! Oh, that's right. It's. Uh, Uh, window controls here. Just remember the key combination. There we go. I don't know why it suddenly scaled up. Oops. Oh, Windows, aren't you wonderful? Set it back down, and then. Why is the door locked? <laughs> the door handle doesn't work. Oh well, I can show you more or less what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I may have actually set that to 1920 by 1200 actually. So in VirtualBox you define a, a resolution at which it's going to be displayed first? Is that the, ste the steps here? Yeah. I've never really used that much. So. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really trying to show you VirtualBox here, I'm just, tr I'm just trying to it runs within VirtualBox if you're using VirtualBox. 
then you can, in VirtualBox, you can, you can choose the, the, the scale. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah, so the operating system determines uh, how large it will be, and gotcha. then in VirtualBox, you can scale it up or down later. Please go. delay here. Uh, virtual box is not being especially cooperative. All right. So I think this is running on 1920 by 1200 actually, not 1680. But you can see how tiny the icons are, even blown up to 150 <laughs> percent. <coughs> uh, I might need to reboot my VM here. This is not <laughs> behaving itself very well. I will do that. Did you resume the VM? No. Was it full asleep? No. Thank you. I think my ACBI PSD expired. Mm. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it'll still come up. Yeah. Have you renewed support? Yeah. So uh, I don't know what's up with the mouse here. It's probably because the it doesn't like running on the different resolution of the projector. But anyway, man, this isn't okay. Anyway, just just giving you a brief idea of what the default sizes look like. So, if I want bigger icons, that's the first thing. For bigger icons, you go into the workplace shell setting. If you have dynamic icons installed, you can turn them on here. Paint, please. Thank you. <laughs> and dynamic icons. It looks fine if I drag this over to the other screen, so I think it's something to do with the resolution on, on the, uh, the external monitor here. Sorry about that, but at any rate, you can see what happens. So you've got the big icons on the desktop. However, the etc. icons aren't any bigger, so that's still a limitation. So this is a nice solution for the icons, but it doesn't really address the... Uh, fonts. So what I'm going to do now, I was going to go through the scheme and show you the individual settings, but given the video problems, I, I think that's just going to use up too much time. So I'm just going to play with this proof of concept app that I wrote that I was just showing you. So this program here is what I've been working on. So it's got a drop-down list with a bunch of preset um, personalities. Well, I just call them presets. So the top one always shows the current settings. So these are all of the different font settings that I mentioned. There's the icon text, window text, menu text, uh, fonts in the scheme. There is the title bar font. I didn't bother showing both the scheme and the styler version. I just, if styler is installed, I show the one for styler and then I set them both to the same thing because you don't really want them set to different things, it's just confusing. And then the dialog font that Styler uses, which is the one you actually see, and then there's the system default fo font setting, which is that any file setting that I mentioned. This one is basically just used for dialog scaling if you have the, the Styler font set as well. So I've simply listed it as default, system default and dialog scaling. And you can enable it 
or disable it. And disabling it just deletes that thing from the INI entirely, which means it's going to default to the OS2 built in, which is either 10 or 12 point system proportion. Now here's, here's the really interesting part. You can choose from these different presets. So right now we're on current, which should be the same as small fonts. This is basically what you would normally get out of the box um, on an OS2 system. So basically everything set to nine dot warp sounds. Set to medium fonts. Uh, okay. So I set that to 11 point warp sounds for most of them. You can already see that's gonna be more readable. Then there's large fonts. Um, now, I did also release an updated version of my Warp Sans uh, extended sizes, which goes up to 18 point. This is going to be included in ArcOS 5.1. It's, I think I may have uploaded it to Hubs already, I don't recall. Um, I should probably check. And uh, I also added some more sizes of System Proportional and released that as well. I don't have that one installed on here, which is why it's falling back to 18 point Helvetica, which is huge. And now that's just used for the scaling. Uh, so, so this is the huge, so I didn't show you the large. Okay, so large is 12 points, basically. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll go with this one. So if I say okay, it's going to apply all of those different scheme settings and all of those different registry settings in both the scheme, in the OS2.ini, and in Styler. And, okay, changes have been saved. Please shut down and reboot. So I'm going to reboot, and I'll show you what it looks like now. And I hope I... I knew a lot of this in the back of my head, vaguely, in theory, but I hadn't really sat down to really dig into how it works. Hey, look, you're one of the OS2 community workplace shell and PM shell malls that did for stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> could you just go in and change the, all the font files so they actually present bigger than they do normally? Um, wait, well, which font? Well, well aren't fonts are in files, right? Yeah, but that would only work if you kept the, the same fonts. And it's, it kind of undermines the ability to change your own fonts and the font sizes. If you're choosing a nine-point font, it has to be nine-point. Like, it's not an arbitrary measure. It actually does mean something. I see. Okay, so you can see the desktop fonts are bigger. The uh, menu fonts are bigger. Now, this is if we if we look at the kind of standard IBM dialogues, which is not one, not that one. Um, like this one, you can see all of the fonts here are bigger, and the buttons are bigger. If I, if I run, say, the Find tool, um, notice that the title bar is now taller, and the window scales are, the window controls are bigger. Um, here, you can edit the colors. Uh, and I think I accidentally opened the icon editor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh dear, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's because there's like four or five different images in this. Mm -hmm. Is that a redraw issue because of the VM running in a in a, in a, in a screen mode? Or does that happen also when you run in full screen mode? I don't know. Um, Go find out. Um, so the built-in IBM pages, as you can see, are scaled up. The notebook tabs are still tiny. The text here is still tiny. If I open the font palette, however, oops, this one. Oh, man. Sorry about these redrawing issues. So if I were to drag a font onto the actual window, that would update the, all of the tabs and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's just a presentation a parameter issue. This, it's probably solvable. Uh, also, notice that the 
di um, title bar bitmaps are being fully scaled to accommodate the, the new height of the title bar. I had to fix that in Styler, so if you're still running Styler 1.1 um, bot 201, which came, comes in Arc OS 5.0, this will not work terribly well. You'll have to tweak the, the settings or just change it to color or something. With version 202, which is in Arc OS 5.1, uh, you shouldn't get any, any issues with that, uh, so it should scale properly. Uh, I also fixed the problem where you could sometimes get like black squares on one end of the title bar um, because of a scaling issue. Um, hopefully that's fixed. That may still occasionally happen for buttons, but I, I don't know. So, um, to show you some other screens which were not included by IBM, oh, like the screensaver one, for example. So here you see the problem. Um, this, this is the Doodle screensaver. It's a third-party application. So it's not IBM code, so it doesn't, unfortunately, pick up these, these font settings. Why do you think that happens? Because it's supposedly to be a child of the workplace class. Yeah, but the dialogue, the page itself yes. is, is a dialogue resource okay. that they, whoever wrote it, designed. And they can just as easily set a presentation parameter on it, okay. and, they, and they do. So that's. I did talk briefly with this about the X Workplace maintainer a number of years ago, or at least there, there was a brief conversation on the um, X Workplace develop mailing list where I brought this up, and we, I think we did added something to quick to see if we could fix it easily, and uh, wh whatever we tried, I don't recall exactly, didn't work. So this is something to, to be looked at to maybe uh, in the future. And by the way, uh, in case you're not aware, Uh, clear, clear up, clear up, okay. Now, if the uh, window list is using its default font, it will also uh, pick up the default system font. Uh, how many people, by the way, are aware that you can do this? Yeah, with the window list. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I usually set it to warp sense because I like that one, but yeah. Just a, a little tip for anybody who might not have known. So the next thing is full screen command prompt. Sorry, window command prompt. Oops, that was full screen. Um, I'll just get this thing. There we go, window. So if you just go in here and choose font size, since this is an Arc OS 5.1 uh, beta. I believe. Is there like a redraw screen now here? Option there should be. No, there's not. Uh, the dialogue is probably somewhere. Hold on. Uh, I think it finally locked up. All right, well, take my word for it, you can pick, oops, yeah, that's the window scaling thing for you. Um, take my word for it anyway, you can pick bigger fonts in ArcOS 5.1 for the uh, command prompt window. So let me just go back to my slideshow. How did you figure that out with the DS Press? Did somebody disassemble it or something? Well, I already knew from a lot of my previous font work that that's where System VIO resides. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's all, it's actually where all of the built-in fonts reside, uh, like all of the built-in bitmap fonts. Yeah. But to actually modify, it, they're just resources. You can you don't even, you don't need the code. You can just pull them out with Resource Manager, edit them with the font editor, and uh, uh -huh. okay. compile them with the the resource compiler. If you those these are tools that are available in the IBM toolkit, uh, except for Res Manager, which is on Hobbs. Possibly, Stephen was looking at that. I don't recall what he said exactly. Um, okay, the other big limitation is we can't do much about individual applications which control their own fonts. Many applications use the system default font for dialogues, um, in which case, uh, and a user configurable font for other text, in which case they should be fine. That's what programs should do. Some programs use a fixed font for dialogues, like Warp Sense or 8.Health, 
generally speaking, this is not good development practice. Um, even though it took a long time for a lot of us in the OS2 development community to realize that this was not good development practice. Um, now, programs that I write, I generally do this. I generally take care to do it this way with the um, holding on this leaf. Um, <coughs> First option here. Uh, also, programs that I worked on. I modified PM Mail, for example, several years ago, so that it takes this approach. Uh, for programs that use a fixed font for dialogues, speaking of the dialogue editor that I just mentioned, and the sorry, the resource compiler, uh, it is possible to update dialogue resources in a program without the source code. That, that's we've done that in many occasions. Uh, many of us uh, know how how it's done, so it's not. Uh, it, it requires some specialized knowledge, but it's not rocket science. Um, now programs, this is the, the tricky one. If a program hard codes their fonts directly in the program source code, um, those programs would basically have to be modified at the source level. And some, you know, if it's, an, if it's open source software, okay, should be doable. If it's not open source software, you're probably stuck with it, unfortunately. Um, In some programs, it may be possible, but it depends on it. It depends on how it was compiled, whether the code is compressed, uh, it, yeah. so on. You know, it, it has been possible in some cases, I believe, but I would not count on it being possible. We had to do that with one of our enterprise clients, if you recall. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I don't. I don't recall exactly, but it rings a bell. Yeah. So, uh, sorry about the display problems, but uh, any questions about what I covered? <coughs> I think we, uh, we had a couple already, but uh, any more? Yes? Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, what would, I mean, let's say on a given system where you know you're not going to need the small font, what would be the downside to say modifying the fonts themselves? Um, it's probably harder than doing it this way. Well, I mean, but in the case where you've got these particular programs, you're stuck, you just get a nine-point font, right? Well, I mean, they're system fonts. If you modify them for that one program, you modify them for everything in the system. Right, right. So, but so on a given system, where you're probably never going to need that nine-point font, or would that miss up the, the, the print, print out or something? Never say never. Yeah. I mean, in theory, if it doesn't cause any side effects elsewhere, you could. I wouldn't recommend it with any of the built-in system fonts, because they are all used all over the place. Um, and again, a, f a font size is not an arbitrary number. Uh, it actually does have a, a geometric meaning. The, in theory, on a one point is a specific unit of measure. It's one set one seventy seconds of an inch. So on a one hundred and twenty DPI screen, um, you know, a nine point font would be uh, a ten point font. Let's say I think would be about sixteen or so pixels high. Whatever it's 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 a fixed number. So if you change a nine-point font to be like thirty pixels high, I don't know what measurements inside the system that depend on those calculations. You probably have lines running together because the point size is also used, or the the point, the you know, m square size is used to calculate line height usually, but not always. Sometimes it's calculated independently. But it it gets complicated. Let's just leave it. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, any other questions? What resolution is your machine now? Um, the, my machine itself is 2560 by 1600. Um, that VM that I was running was, I think, running at full HD, 1920 by 1080, and then scaled up to 1.5, and it still wasn't filling the whole screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if, if anybody wants to see what ArcOS actually looks like natively on this screen, uh, you can you know, you can come by and look at it. I was hoping to run the presentation from that, but as, as we said, I couldn't get the HDMI output to work with that, so. And natively, you've got it to adjust most of the things so they're useful? Uh, I have, yes. Uh, right now, because I was hoping to demonstrate it, I actually set them all back to the default, so if I boot up OS2 now, it's gonna be minuscule, but, <clears throat> yeah. Then there would be a dramatic presentation. There would, yes, it would, it would, well. <laughs> 
you, you, for best effect, you'd probably have to come back, come up and look at the actual screen. I wasn't really expecting to be able to properly demonstrate 2560 by whatever on the screen here. Right. But yeah, come see me at lunch or something, or at the break or whatever, if you if you want a demonstration. There is a question on the chat. Yeah. It's a general thing about ArcOS icons. Uh, what about the icons on X on the X Center? If it can be found something to grow yeah, I did up. touch on that. Um, not with any method that I'm using here. You'd have to modify X Workplace. Okay. Again, that's, that's possible right. in theory, uh, but it's. I, I don't know what the best way of doing that would be, or if X Center itself really would be able to support that. It m might be necessary to kind of rewrite X Center, or it might be possible to modify it to use ping icons. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. either way, X Workplace would have to be modified. Or PNG icons just to be updated somehow. Yeah, you can actually, you know, like, you can resize the X center itself. You can mm -hmm. make it taller, but that doesn't change but the size of the icon. The little fonts really get centered in between yeah. the <laughs> large bar. Yeah. Uh, any more? I think we're starting to run into them, actually. Are we're we at lunch now? Yeah. We okay, okay, fine. Yeah, we're at, we're at lunch. Food is here. Oh, good. Um, there's water in the back here. You can take a bottle of water with you or coffee. If you want something else specifically, let me know. I'll be running out and picking up stuff. i got to get power strips and what have you. I can certainly stop at the grocery store. But since we got water, and water's healthy to drink, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in a plastic bottle. You, no, um, yeah. uh, BPA free, so we're, we're good to go. Is the water here drinkable, by the way, in the top bar? Um, Judging I by your expression, I would say probably don't. <laughs> What's the tap water? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. why wouldn't it? Be? You, uh, I've been in places where they say don't drink it. Well, overseas, <laughs> you mean? Or? Yeah, I mean, I was in Mexico last summer. Well, Mississippi, maybe. Right? No. <laughs> I, I, I think it's highly chlorinated in here. When I was under the shower this morning, I had to smell like a. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. Might Florida be. gets their water out of the ground, don't they? Yes. Yeah. As far as I know. been through a nuclear reactor accident, I think a little water's <laughs> <laughs> uh, What about, what about, uh, you, you work with Japanese stuff, right? What, yeah. what is the stuff you've just been talking about? Did you do anything to investigate that? I mean, fonts are fonts. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not quite true. DBCS fonts have their own kind of logic, but you, you asked how I found out, well, somebody asked, I don't know exactly which of you it was, uh, how I found out about the being able to add, find those window command prompt fonts in VSPRES DLL. Um, one reason I knew that that list of fonts was loaded dynamically was because if you loaded a VCS system, it's a different list of fonts because it knows to look at the DBCS fonts instead. Mm -hmm. And whatever DBCS fonts you have installed on that, and they are different for each DBCS system, it will use those. And so I knew they weren't shipping a separate dspres.dll for each DBCS system. So uh -huh. I knew I knew that list could be modified manually. And I figured just adding the fonts would do it. I tried first adding the fonts in a, in a separate file, like a normal installable font. Uh, that did not work. So I had to put them in dspres.dll itself, and that worked. So when you're running a Japanese desktop, mm -hmm. a command prompt is in Japanese? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. How do you type it? Uh, with what's called the input, input method editor. Yeah. Okay. And I and E. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the double byte character stuff is, it's like a whole other level. I mean, it's like another version of OS2 entirely. Yeah, I, I did a presentation on some IME stuff a couple workshops ago. It's archived online if you're interested. And like that's true for like single byte characters that are like Arabic, for example. The command prompt can work backwards. I, I'm not sure. I'm trying. There's 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 a bidirectional input tool in you know Asu that I've never really played with, but it's uh -huh. meant for Arabic and Hebrew use, I think. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, oh, by the way, uh, the new sizes of, of system VIO, I actually did have to leave out uh, Arabic, Korean, and uh, Thai support from those because otherwise the font file gets 
bigger than 64K and it won't be accepted anymore. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, if we have any uh, Arabic, Korean, or, well actually Korean isn't a problem because those use separate fonts anyway. So Arabic or Thai users, unfortunately, uh, you won't be able to take advantage of those bigger yeah. Um, Did you get Greek in there? Or? Uh, I, think I, I think I just managed to get Greek and Hebrew in, but uh, I'm not, the very largest size might not have one of the other of those. Mm. Discriminating between uh, you know, Hebrew and Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a purely technical limitation. There's a 64K limit. Yes, they tell us that all the time. <laughs> Pardon? Leave some of the letters. You can. <laughs> they have to be contiguous. <laughs> yeah. All right, if there's nothing more, I think, uh, I think I'm done. Any? Will can we, we leave our things in here? We'll be locked yeah. down. I will, uh, I will make sure the door is closed and, and locked, good. and then I'll get Sinian to unlock you know it. You know you can't get in from us. Yeah, well, that's why I'll get, I should have asked for a key myself, but I'll get her to unlock the door for us before we start our afternoon session. So, if, as I say, if you want something to drink with, with lunch right now, grab water or coffee now will be the time before we go over to the... Uh, Thank you.